The second problem for DAGs is what is called the longest path. Right? So, we have a DAG without cycles. We saw that a topological sort will enumerate this in some feasible order such that if I depend, if j depends on i, if there is an edge from i to j, then i will always be enumerated before j. Now, let us look at a typical scenario. So, for example, supposing these are courses and these edges represent prerequisites and it takes a semester to do a course, for example, then we can see how much time it will take for us to complete all the courses and finish the program. So, each course takes a semester and now we execute these courses or we take these courses as fast as possible. So, initially because 0 and 1 have no prerequisites, we can take them to the first semester. Then having done 0 and 1, we find that we can do 2 and 4 because they only depend on 0 and 1 and we can do 3 as well. So, 2, 3 and 4 are courses we can take in the second semester. Now having done all of this, we still cannot take courses 6 and 7 because they depend on 5. So, we have to do 5 alone in the next semester. Having done 5 alone in the next semester, then we can do 6 and then we can do 7. So, this set of 0 to 7, 8 courses will actually take us 5 semesters to complete given these dependencies. So, our task now is to find the longest path in a DAG. And as we can imagine, this is closely related to the order in which they are enumerated. So, this is very closely related to topological sort. So, if we have a DAG, right, and then the in degree of a node is 0, then the longest path to that node is 0. In, that, in other words, it can be done on, on the very first day, if you want to think about it that way, right. So, there is no requirement. The longest path rep represents how many requirements I need to satisfy sequentially in order to get to the task. So, if it in degree is 0, then I can do it immediately. If it is not 0, then it has some incoming edges. So, if I knew how long it took to come there, the longest path to each of the incoming edges, then I can take the maximum among these, that is the constraint now. I have to wait for all of them to be completed. So, I can take the one which is going to get completed latest, the maximum among the latest longest paths to all the incoming edges and then my incoming long, my longest path will be 1 plus that. Right? So, since I need to know the maximum of these longest paths, I need to enumerate them before I enumerate this vertex. But this is precisely the point of topological sorting. So, when I am processing a vertex k and trying to compute its longest path, I need to know the longest paths of everything which has an edge pointing into k. But in a topological ordering, this would have been done. So, if I, if I compute longest path following a topological ordering, then this kind of recursive or inductive definition that I have done here can be satisfied. So, what we will do is compute longest path in the topological order. So, let us assume that we have some topological ordering of our vertices. Then we know that everything in the every vertex in this list has all its neighbors appearing before it. Right? So, we can go from left to right having fixed a topological ordering, fixed to right and we can do this. And we do not have to first compute the topological order and then scan it again. As we are going along, as we are computing the topological order, at any inductive point in the topological order, we have the same scenario. That is, everything that I depend on has been enumerated before me. So, I can inductively compute the longest path along with the topological ordering in one single pass. Right? So, as before, we start by computing the in degree of every vertex and now we will also simultaneously compute the longest path of every vertex. Right? So, we initialize the longest path to be 0 by assumption and now wherever I have in degree 0, right, it is 0. Now, when I enumerate something, I eliminate it from the graph, I update the in degrees, but I will also update the longest path. So, now I know for instance, right, that it take, to, takes me at least one step to reach 2 because I have to do something before it, right. So, I will update the longest path to 2 and to 7 as being 1 plus the longest path to the vertex which I just eliminated. So, I have, so I am incrementally updating the longest path, right. So, now if I enumerate 0, then again I know that its longest path was 0, but it will now contribute 1 to both 3 and 4. Notice that the longest path to 2 remains 1, because the longest path to this was 0, the longest path to this was 0. So, it is the maximum of both these quantities plus 1. So, I already knew it was 1. So, having enumerated the new vertex 0 does not give me any new information about the longest path to vertex 2, right. Now, I enumerate vertex 3. 
So vertex 3 currently already has a listed longest path of 1, right? And now 3 was pointing into vertex 5. So now 5 must take 2 steps to be reached because it has to be reached via 3 and 3 already takes 1 step. So the longest path of 5 which was earlier 0 as a default assumption has suddenly become 2. Right? I keep doing this. So next I eliminate 2 and when I eliminate 2 nothing new happens because we had the situation like before where 2 and 3 both had longest path 1. So when I updated from 3 I already knew that 5 needed longest path 2 so I get no change there. Right? So now if I enumerate 5 then I get that 6 requires 3 steps. If I enumerate 6 then I get that 7 requires 4 steps. Finally when I enumerate 4 I get no new information for 7 because 7, 4 required only 1 step and 7 we already know requires 4 steps. So finally I enumerate 7 and I have this sequence. So I have this sequence below which I computed along with the topological sort above telling me the longest path to each of these vertices in my graph. Right? So here is a variation of our topological sort algorithm which we are now directly giving in terms of an adjacency list because we saw that for a topological sort the list makes lot more sense in adjacency matrix. Right? So the new thing here is that we are keeping track of this longest path matrix. So we are not really interested. So we are implicitly doing the topological sort but the purpose of this particular function is not to give us a topological order. So we are not keeping track of what we were doing earlier which was that topologically sorted list. Instead we will keep this longest path function as a dictionary. Longest path L path of i will be the longest path to i. Right? So we initialize the in degree and the longest path of every vertex to be 0. Now as before we will walk through all the vertices and update the in degree in time proportional to the number of vertices. Now as before because we are doing the same topological calculation sort calculation as before we keep the 0 degree q and we put all the 0 degree vertices into the q. So, so far we have done nothing different from what we are doing before except that instead of keeping track of this topological sort list we are keeping track of this L path longest path dictionary. So now as long as there are 0 degree vertices to process we take out the highest one. So now for every outgoing edge from here for every k which is in the adjacency list of j, we update its in degree as before and now is the new step, right? So this is new. So what we are doing now is we are saying the longest path of k is the maximum of what we already knew and 1 plus the longest path of j which we have just discovered. So this is the only difference actually between the topological sort algorithm and the longest path algorithm except for the fact that we are, we can also keep track of the topological sort here if we wished but we have not done so. And then as before if we discover that the newly decremented degree has become 0 we put it into the queue so that it will be processed when its turn comes. Right? And finally instead of returning the uh, topological sort list we are returning this path. Uh, this uh, longest path dictionary. Okay? So this is basically very similar to topological sort and so is the analysis. So initializing takes zero, m plus n time right? and inside the loop which runs n times we do an update which is an amortized m time update because we have to do it to the sum of the degrees and so this is m plus n. So basically with directed acyclic graphs now we can do both these things very efficiently. We can get the feasible schedule with topological sort and while we are doing the topological sort we can also compute through the dependencies the longest path that is the minimum time. So the longest path is really telling me the minimum time it will take me to finish all the tasks according to the dependencies. Now of course the longest path makes sense for any graph. Right, I can take any graph which does not have cycles and say if I have cycles then the way we have defined path, right? Uh, sorry we can uh, go round and round. So we can basically look at paths which do not repeat vertices and ask what is the longest path in a graph. So this is often called the diameter of the graph. Okay? Now it turns out that computing this in general is very hard. So in DAGs we have a very efficient algorithm. We have something which is essentially linear in the size of the DAG. Remember O m plus n is basically linear in the size of the graph. And if we go to a non-DAG then this problem becomes hopelessly 
complicated. So short of trying out all paths and finding out which is the longest, there is no really good strategy which works across all graphs. So longest path in general is a very hard problem in graphs, but for DAGs it is surprisingly simple.